So, uh, paragraph writing and what are the significant components of writing a paragraph. To begin with, what is a paragraph? We are going to do all that in today's class. So, welcome back friends. We will be talking about paragraph writing, how to spot keywords, topic sentences, signposting, linking words, main ideas, all this in one paragraph. As you already know, a paragraph is the basic unit of uh, any lengthy piece of writing. So, generally we do not write just one paragraph, but at our level we need to write several paragraphs. But let us begin like we have started this course with various parts of speech, categorizing them. We have also learned how to make sentences, elements of sentences. We have also seen what are, uh, how sentences combine together to make more complex varieties of sentences. So, uh, we have been through all these and now as we move on to discuss more uh, uh, complex way of writing, for example, reports, journal articles, SOPs and your CVs, we will begin with the basic unit of writing a longer piece of work. So, this is paragraph for us. Let me show you this example. Please look at the slide here. And this I am showing you as a good example of a paragraph. Please read the paragraph. It is about Sir Isaac Newton, mathematician and physicist, one of the foremost scientific intellects of all time, born at Wolstop near Grantham in Lincolnshire, where he attended school. He entered Cambridge University. In 1661, he was elected a fellow of Trinity College in 1667 and Lucasian professor of mathematics in 1669. He remained at the university lecturing in most years until 1698. Of these Cambridge years in which Newton was at the height of his creative power, he singled out 1665 to 1666 spent largely in Lincolnshire because of plague in Cambridge as the prime of my age for invention. During two to three years of these mental effort, he prepared philosophy, naturalist, principia, mathematica, commonly known as the principia. Although this was not published until 1687, as a firm opponent of the attempt by King James II to make the universities into Catholic institutions, Newton was elected member of parliament for the University of Cambridge to the convention parliament of 1689 and set again in 1701 to 1702. Meanwhile, in 1696, he had moved to London as warden of the Royal Mint. He became master of the mint in 1699, an office he retained to his death. He was elected a fellow of the Royal Society of London in 1671 and in 1703 he became president, being annually re-elected for the rest of his life. His major work Optics appeared the next year. He was knighted in Cambridge in 1705 as Newtonian science became increasingly accepted on the continent and especially after the general peace was restored in 1714. Following the war of the Spanish succession, Newton became the most highly esteemed natural philosopher in Europe. His last decades were passed in revising his major works, polishing his studies of ancient history and defending himself against critics as well as carrying out his official duties. Newton was modest, diffident and a man of simple tastes. He was angered by criticism of opposition and harboured resentment. He was harsh towards enemies but generous to friends. 
in government and at the royal society. He proved able administrator. He never married and lived modestly, but was buried with great pomp in Westminster Abbey. Now, what is so wrong with this paragraph? Can anyone tell me? Before we respond to this question, you have to again ask the question, what is the main idea? Well, main idea is yeah, they tell you about or give you an overview about the life of this great scientist. Topic sentences. Now, what do you understand by topic sentence? Topic sentence is something that defines a paragraph. Now, and it is the main idea that should be developed in the remaining sentences. That is a very simple definition or explanation of what is a topic sentence. Keywords, how many keywords? There are several keywords here, not just one. If you start making a list of keywords, words which are extremely important here, it would go on and on and every good paragraph should have, uh, let us say five or four to five uh, keywords. What is happening here? What is so wrong with it? Well, the answer is simple. This is not a single paragraph, but this piece of writing, this particular piece of writing, it requires several paragraphs is something, it is lot of information, very well written, grammatically correct, it will still uh, not uh, pass as a very effective piece of writing, because of the simple reason the writer has not used paragraphing at all. He does not know where to end. Uh, uh, by he does not know, I mean, I, uh, let me just make it clear. I have taken it from a particular source and I have done the work here. And very soon you will be seeing the way the original writer of uh, this particular passage has written and broken this writing into several paragraphs. So, this was just to give you an example, a sense of what can go wrong when paragraph does not work and when paragraphing is not up to the mark. Here of course, there is no sense of paragraphing and this is something that we often find in the written works of several students. Every paragraph should have a single main idea, a topic sentence and then remaining sentences should be an elaboration. Now, let us look at this paragraph and this is the way it was intended to be. This is the way it appears and see the first sent, uh, paragraph, it ends at a particular place, there are, there are there is some space and moving on to the second paragraph and the third paragraph. What is the first paragraph all about? His early life and his education, second paragraph, um, he is a, he was a firm opponent of the uh, attempt by King James to make uh, universities Catholic and then his good work at the university. Third, it b basically talks about uh, um, as uh, uh, his uh, later years and then up to his death. So, every paragraph has a main topic, has a single idea which is developed his early life and his education. By early life, I mean his education. Second paragraph, his good work at uh, University of Cambridge. Third paragraph, his peak of uh, achievements and then eventually his death. So, every paragraph should have a single main idea which should be developed. So, coming back to our first or my first question, what is a paragraph? So, a paragraph 
is several sentences, ideally 3 to 4 or 5 to 6 depending on the overall length of your writing. So, if you have written a reasonably long essay, then a para each paragraph should have 4 to 5 sentences and remember we do not um, support too much of uh, simple uh, sentences, there should be a blend of simple compound and complex. So, what is a paragraph? A paragraph is several sentences grouped together and each uh, paragraph should relate to one main topic. A paragraph is a group of related sentences in other words that develop a, uh, an idea. It is rarely that a paragraph contains a single sentence all that, although that also happens, but for that you have to first master writing lengthy paragraphs and then move on to do something more experimental like writing paragraphs in single sentences. Otherwise, ideally speaking and for exam purposes, the best way to write is uh, to write a paragraph is in several sentences. The most important principle to observe uh, in a paragraph is its unity. By this we mean that each paragraph should consist of a single idea, that is what I told you, a main idea. Generally, the topic is expressed in the first sentence of a paragraph. But there are times when the central idea is seen in the last sentence of a paragraph. So, pay attention if you are particularly if you are reading the first and the last sentence of a paragraph. If you are writing, uh, you can come straight to the point or bring the punch line in the last sentence of a paragraph. A paragraph should have logical sequence of thoughts and ideas which is very key element. A paragraph should have one single topic. Now, look at this paragraph again, this is the same uh, paragraph taken from the, the, uh, the writing that we have just seen on uh, Newton. Please uh, look at the slide. This is Newton's life highlighted. So, what we have done here is who was Newton? This is one basic idea, it will give you one central idea. Who was Newton? What did he do? Major work and his important work and uh, born in this year, died in this year. Look at now this second paragraph, please read it. I, here I want you to identify the main idea and the supporting details. For Cardinal Newman, the ideal university is a community of thinkers engaging in intellectual pursuits, not for any external purpose, but as an end in itself envisaging a bro broad liberal education which teaches students to think and to reason and to compare and to discriminate and to analyze. Look, this is a, comp a compound sentence, but very well written. Overuse of and does not really hamper the progression of idea here. It is an example of good writing. Newman held that narrow minds are born of narrow specialization and is stipulated that students should be given a solid grounding in all areas of study. A restricted vocational education was out of the question for him. Somewhat surprisingly, he also espoused the view that universities should be entirely free of religious interference, putting forward a secular, pluralist and inclusive ideal. So, what is the main idea? Cardinal, Cardinal Newman's concept of ideal university and then the remaining paragraphs support that what was an ideal university education for or uh, through the uh, uh, perception of 
Cardinal Newman. What was his perception of, of a great university and good education? So, main idea Cardinal Newman's concept of good education, an ideal university, all the remaining sentences support that idea. We have to also understand that in a good paragraph, um, words within a sentence should appear in the best possible order, so that the sentences within a paragraph read properly. You should also be able to connect sentences um, between uh, themselves, so there should be a good connection between sentences itself. Okay. Um, a good writer always remember arranges his sentences in a most effect effective way. The basis for this should be logical as well as chronological when there is a series of events. Sentences should be arranged logically when the sentences build up a theme or an argument. So, remember chronology when we are talking about a series of events and we talk about developing or connecting sentences logically when sentences build up a theme of an argument and link between as you know the sentences is achieved by an effective use of linking words. We have already seen in some of our earlier classes what are those linking words, please revise that. Now, here is an exercise for you rearrange the jumbled paragraph or rather the jumbled sentences in a paragraph. This is a paragraph, I would like you to rearrange the sentences. Please look at the paragraphs, read the slide, take a moment, look at the way it begins. Not only did television re-envision our sense of the world, second one begins with every major happening is now captured by television, third one. More than the aeroplane of the nuclear bomb, the computer or the TV has determined what we know and how we think. Politics and politicians are determined by how they play on television. What should be the correct order? Now, look at the answer. The first sentence and this is the topic sentence. Please note this. The first sentence of this paragraph is its topic sentence, the remaining sentences are all but supporting details. The first sentence every major happening is now captured by television or it is not a major happening. And then supporting politics and politicians are determined by how they play on television, public knowledge etcetera are all subject to its critical influence. Then we move on to talk about more than the aeroplane or the nuclear bomb, the computer or the telephone. TV has determined what we know and how we think, the way we believe and how we perceive ourselves. And the last line not only did television re-envision our sense of the world, it remains even in the age of the internet, Facebook and YouTube the most powerful generator. So, this is a summing up of what television is all about and how important it is to our modern society. Look at the effective use of connectors and linking words within the sentences also. If it is not happening on television, it is not a major happening that is the idea. So, therefore, in the very first sentence you have the use of a or and then in second sentence, second part, you have the uh, uh, you have a very effective use of the connector and then read on. In the last part, that is the conclusion of paragraph, not only did it is also stubbornly unavoidable, it is not only but also. So, those are the linking words here. Remember for bringing about cohesion, connection, always pay attention to signposting or linking words. These are the words that guide the reader along the path 
uh, of the writer's intended meaning. So, you want to convey a meaning, use or make an effective use of linking words. However, by this I do not mean that overuse linking words. In the same paragraph, use all the linking words that you know. Use them judiciously, but use them with variety. Uh, again, go back to the par previous paragraph and see how linking words are used. I am going to show you another paragraph. If you try to replace the linking words, the meaning would not come off that strongly and it will weaken the overall structure. Let us look at the paragraph. Here is a sample for you. I have highlighted all the linking words. Read it and see by replacing these linking words what happens to the sentence, to the, over, to the overall reading quality and coherence of these sentences. Remember, now uh, this is not just one single paragraph, but several paragraphs coming together. However, for example, and, and, such, and, whether, but, just like, as late as, meanwhile, however. Look at the variety. Look at the good use of the linking words and the signposting words. They tell you where to make a turn in your thoughts and ideas. So, in a nutshell, what should you do in order to start writing a good paragraph? Brainstorm ideas either singly or in pair or in groups. Organize your ideas in a plan and then write a draft. If you want to write, practice writing, always write. You can read as many books about writing, you can listen to as many lectures about writing. Unless you write your thoughts on a piece of paper or on your PC, you are not learning enough. So, practice writing. Here is a list of some practice paragraph topics for you. Please look at the slide. I would want you to write a para on any two of the following in about 150 words each. A diesel engine, a filament lamp, a simple microscope, the Fahrenheit scale, the periodic table. This is your work to practice writing. Here is a, a, another slide for you to consult and refer to on paragraphs. Please look at the slide. All right, before we wind up, I want to do this vocabulary exercise, a very simple, but you will find it interesting, something that you may use in your day to day life. Please look at the slide, it is vocabulary, complete the following. How do you put in these words? A dash of ointment, a dash of aspirin, a dash of bandages, a dash of tissues, a dash of sunburn spray. So, uh, the idea is that I want to test your um, vocabulary in day to day matters. And here are your answers. A tube of um, ointment, a bottle of aspirin, a package of bandages, a box of tissues, a can of suntan spray. Sometimes uh, instead of bottle of aspirin, you may use something else. Um, it is just the cultural thing in most uh, western societies, aspirin comes in a bottle, but uh, I am aware that we get those strips um, in from which we can get our aspirins. But this is the, uh, these are some of the general ways of containing things. Now, um, before we wind up and before I end the class, I want you to practice this speaking and this is the last exercise for the day. Please uh, look at the slide. I want you to use these prepositions, do a pair work where I want you to describe your daily routine using the prepositions 
at around early late until before and after on in now remember that uh, uh, you should practice this with your friend with your teacher with your mentor uh, and develop perhaps uh, write it out write out your thoughts and then practice speaking here is a a link for you a good uh, video please look at the slide the uh, title of the video is called speaking to one or thousand here is a link that i am giving you uh, the entire video is perhaps not available but you can always uh, source it uh, through your library or through your college this is a, a reasonably good video where you can learn how to indulge in or how to practice public speaking so thank you very much we'll meet again for our next class